Hi everyone, in this video we are going to study the necessary conditions for both roots of a quadratic equation to be less than a certain real number. I have already created a separate video on a similar topic where I have discussed the necessary conditions for both roots of a quadratic equation to be greater than a certain real number. I have shared the link of that video in the description. Now in this video we are going to see what are the necessary conditions for both roots of a quadratic equation to be less than a certain real number. So let's assume that we have a quadratic equation which is a x squared plus b x plus c equals 0 and for this equation we can say well then the quadratic function would be f of x equals a x squared plus b x plus c we can assume that the quadratic polynomial is a x squared plus b x plus c and also let's assume that the two roots of this equation are alpha and beta and that is why I have noted that alpha comma beta they both less than k. k is that certain real number, right? Whatever that real number may be. The discussion is going to be very similar to the previous video for which I have provided the link in the description. Now here again, let's talk about the two roots here. For a quadratic equation to have two roots, I mean two real roots, the discriminant must be greater than or equal to zero. The discriminant cannot be negative. If the discriminant is negative, then we don't have real roots. We have imaginary roots. If we are talking about two roots to be less than a certain real number, that means the roots also have to be real roots, right? So in that case, to have real roots for a quadratic equation, the discriminant must be non-negative. I mean, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So let me make a note of that. That is our condition number one. And then in the diagrams, I have located the point K. Let's assume that this is the point K right here, K comma zero. So we can say this is K comma zero. That's the point on the X axis. And in that case, if the roots have to be less than K, then definitely K has to be outside of the parabola and K has to be on the right hand side of the parabola if K has to be greater than both the roots. So how can we guarantee that k will be on the right hand side of the parabola well we can do this one trick like i have explained in the previous video also that if we can somehow say that k is greater than the x coordinate of the vertex then we can guarantee that k will be on the right hand side of at least one of the roots if not both roots right so here let's also use the same condition that k must be greater than the x coordinate of the vertex now what is the x coordinate of the vertex well that's negative b over 2a so here let me make a quick note so here I have noted the second condition which is the x coordinate of the vertex that is negative b over 2a has to be less than k right then only we can somehow guarantee that yes at least one of the roots will be less than k now the third condition that we are going to study is how do we make sure that k is not inside the parabola because if k somehow comes inside the parabola even though it could be on the right hand side of the vertex still k could come inside the parabola and then guess what one of the roots will be greater than k but we want both roots to be less than k, right? So for example, if you look at this portion on the x-axis right here, so suppose that red dot is the x-coordinate of the vertex and then I'm highlighting this part of the x-coordinate right here, I'm highlighting in green and if k somehow comes in that zone, then the x-coordinate of the vertex will still be less than k. However, there will be one root which will be greater than k instead of being less than k, there will be one root that will be greater than k. So somehow we have to guarantee that k does not go inside the parabola. Now how can we guarantee that? Well in the previous video also we have seen that we can use this criteria right here. Let me quickly draw a vertical line on k comma zero on that point. When the leading coefficient is positive we know that the parabola opens upwards and then if you think about it the product of the leading coefficient and f of k it will be positive at least for these two parabola it is positive and let's also look at the two other parabola where the leading coefficient is negative. There also we can so that the leading coefficient times f of k will be positive only when k is outside of the parabola. That is the most important point that if we have to somehow ensure that k is outside of the parabola then we can use this as a condition that a times f of k will be positive. Let's look at the second set of parabola. The second set of parabola is for the quadratic functions where the leading coefficient is negative and there again if we have to ensure that the point k is outside of the parabola we can use this condition that f of k multiplied by the leading coefficient it will be positive because leading coefficient itself is negative and f of k is also going to be negative as long as k is outside of the parabola. Now in case k goes inside the parabola f of k will become positive and we don't want that right. 
we want k to be outside of the parabola so f of k will always be negative if you look at the second set of parabola here f of k will always be negative if k is outside of the parabola so here again we can conveniently use the same condition that the leading coefficient which is a times f of k the product of these two negative quantities will be positive so now in both the cases if we simply use this condition so let me quickly write it here that if we use a times f of k i'm just making a quick note right here so a times f of k whether a is positive or negative you see this will be positive this product will be positive as long as k is outside of the parabola because in the first case f of k is positive a is positive their product will be positive in the second case f of k is negative and a is also negative so their product will be positive so this is a common condition that we can use to guarantee that k is outside of the parabola and not inside so let me make the final note up there so to guarantee that both the roots of this quadratic equation would be less than k all three conditions have to be satisfied that means these are all and conditions that means first condition has to be true and the second condition has to be true and the third condition has to be true that means after solving each of these inequalities whatever solution set we get we have to take an intersection of the three solution sets we cannot take union we have to take intersection because all all three conditions must be satisfied so let's take an example and see how it works out in fact i'm going to use the same example that we used in the previous video i'm going to take the same example but in this case we will use a different value for k right so let's take the example let's suppose we have an example like this where the quadratic equation is x squared plus p minus 5 times x minus 5 times p is equal to 0 that's the quadratic equation and p is an unknown there we have to find out for what values of p both roots of this quadratic equation will be less than positive 6 so we have to essentially determine the values of p for which this quadratic equations both roots will be less than positive 6 now what is the first condition we should try well first condition would be discriminant must be greater than or equal to 0 so in this case condition number 1 or the first inequality that we are going to try is that discriminant must be greater than or equal to 0 now what is the discriminant in this case well in this case the discriminant is actually b squared minus 4 ac so what is b squared that would be p minus 5 whole squared that is b squared minus 4 times what is a in this case well a is 1 the leading coefficient is 1 and what is c c is actually negative 5 times p so this has to be greater than or equal to 0 and then from here what do we get well if we remove the parenthesis this will be p squared minus 10 times p that is a squared minus 2 ab and then b squared would be 25 p, meaning 5 squared would be 25 then negative 4 times negative 5 times p so that would be positive 20 times p this will be greater than or equal to 0 and from here what do we get well we get p squared then negative 10 times p and positive 20 times p so this will give us positive 10 times p and then plus 25 greater than or equal to 0 and then and this is actually nothing but p plus 5 whole square and if we go with the wavy curve method we can find that p can be any real number for example let me quickly draw a real number line here and in this case the critical point would be p plus 5 equals 0 that is p equals negative 5 so negative 5 would be the critical point here so let's suppose this is the negative 5 on the real number line and then on the right hand side of the critical point any value of p will give us a positive result for this expression which is on the left hand side of the inequality so the right hand side of this would be positive zone right here now let's think about the left hand side well when you go to the left hand side whether the value of the expression will be positive or negative depends on the multiplicity of the critical point right now for this critical point right here which is p plus 5 that's the factor which is giving us this critical point that factors multiplicity is an even number because it is whole square it is a square which is exponent 2 right so the multiplicity is an even number that means when you go to the left hand side of the critical point also the value of the expression will still be positive it will still be positive so we can write it like this or we can draw it like this so on the left hand side of the critical point is also giving us positive value for the expression so that means we can take any value of p including the negative 5 of course that the value of the expression will be greater than or equal to 0 so from here we can say well then p can be any real number we can say p can be any real number that means from negative infinity to positive infinity now what is the second condition the second condition 
is that k will be greater than the x coordinate of the vertex or in other words we can say the x coordinate of the vertex must be less than k now in this case what is k well k is actually 6 so from here what can we say well from here we can say well what is b b is actually p minus 5 so negative b would be negative p minus 5 negative b over 2 times a what is a well a is the leading coefficient in this case it is 1 in this example the leading coefficient is 1 so this has to be less than k and k is actually 6 so this has to be less than 6 now if we multiply both sides by a 2 what are you going to get on the left hand side we will have negative p and positive 5 so we can write it as 5 minus p will be less than 2 times 6 that would be 12 and then from here can we say it like this that 5 minus 12 would be less than positive p that means from here we can say well then p is definitely greater than 5 minus 12 that is negative 7 so that is our second solution set and using the interval notation we can say well then p will belong to this set p will be greater than negative 7 so it will be from negative 7 through positive infinity so so far we have obtained two solution sets right now we have one other condition to check the third condition that we need to check is a times f of k must be positive that is the third condition we need to solve right now in this example what is k well k is actually 6 because we have the necessary criteria that both roots of this quadratic equation has to be less than positive 6 so that is actually the k right here right so we can say this is nothing but the k this is the k as per the theory right so now let's try to solve this inequality also let's see what happens so we have a times f of k what is a in this case well in this case a is actually 1 in this example a is 1 and then for f of k we can say well k is actually 6 so that means f of 6 this product has to be greater than 0 and from here what can you say our original quadratic equation is like this x squared plus p minus 5 times x minus 5 times p is equal to 0 from here we can say well then f of x is actually x squared just the quadratic expression here x squared plus p minus 5 times x minus 5 times p that is our f of x and then what would be f of 6 well f of 6 would be we are going to replace the value of x with 6 so then we can say well f of 6 would be 6 squared plus p minus 5 times 6 minus 5 times p that is our f of 6 and this has to be greater than 0 and then if we solve it we have 36 plus 6 times p minus 6 times 5 that is 30 so that's negative 30 and then minus 5 times p this is greater than 0 and from here what do we get well we get 6 times p minus 5 times p that gives us positive p just one of the p and then 36 minus 30 that would be plus 6 this is greater than 0 and from here we can say well then p must be greater than negative 6. So that is the third solution set that we have obtained. Previously we obtained two other solution set and here this is the third solution set. And here we can also say that this means p belongs to the solution set which is like this. Using the interval notation it would be from negative 6 through positive infinity. Now we need to take the intersection of all these three solution sets, right? So let me go up a little bit and let's take a look at the two other solution sets. So we have all three solution sets kind of clearly visible right here on the screen. So in one solution set looks like P can be any real number. In another solution set looks like P has to be greater than negative seven. And in the other solution set looks like P has to be greater than negative six. So if we take the intersection of all three solution set, how is it going to look like? Well, let me quickly draw a real number line. Let's suppose this is our real number line and for the first set of solution, we know that P can take any value from the entire real number range, right? So let's assume that the blue line right here is the solution set for the first condition there. And then for the second condition, what do we have? Well, P has to be greater than negative seven. So let's plot the point negative seven right here. So let's assume that this is negative seven. And then for the third solution set, P has to be greater than negative six. So let's assume that this is negative six right here. So for the second second solution set we are saying that p has to be greater than negative 7 so what is the greater than negative 7 range well it is this green zone right here since p is strictly greater than negative 7 we have to exclude the point negative 7 right that is why i have drawn a hollow circle there in the green green color and then if we move to the right hand side that will be the greater than negative 7 zone 
So it's pretty much this entire green zone that is the greater than negative 7 zone. And now also if you look at the third condition there we say P has to be greater than negative 6. So what is the greater than negative 6 zone? Well since it is strictly greater than negative 6 we have to exclude the point negative 6. So I am drawing a hollow circle around negative 6 and that is in pink color. And then any point on the right hand side of that point they all will be part of the solution where P is greater than negative 6. So that means this pink zone right here again I am drawing it on top of the green line right. So I am drawing it on top of the green line because they both coincide because they both represent the same points on the real number line. So now if you look at this pink color zone here on top of the green line there right I have drawn a pink color line there. So this is the zone that represents the possible values of P for which both roots of this quadratic equation will be less than 6. And this is the intersection of the three solution set because our first solution set was the blue line then for the second solution set I drew the green line and then for the third solution set I drew the pink line so ultimately you see the blue and the green and the pink ultimately this pink color portion is the common portion for all three solution sets so that is the intersection of the three solution sets so this is the zone for the value of P so finally we can say well then P must be in this range right P must be in the range of negative 6 through positive infinity that means P can take any value in this range negative 6 through positive infinity. So let's try out one of the values. Well maybe we can pick one of the easy values. Maybe we can take the point 0. So if we assume that P is equal to 0 which is definitely in this range in the pink color zone right 0 would be definitely in the pink color zone. So if we try this value on our quadratic equation let's see what happens. So what was our quadratic equation? Well our quadratic equation was x squared plus P minus 5 times x minus 5 times p that is equal to 0 that was our original quadratic equation and here we are going to use this value of p we are going to use p equals 0. So if we use p equals 0 then what is going to happen to our quadratic equation? Well if we substitute 0 for p then from here what are you going to get? We are going to get x squared plus 0 minus 5 times x minus 5 times 0 and all of that is equal to 0 and from here what do we get? Well from here we get x square minus 5 times x minus 0. I am just not writing it there. I mean we have this 5 times 0 that will give us 0 so I am just not going to write it. So all of this is equal to 0 and then from here if we take x as a common factor then it would be x times x minus 5 and then from here can we write it like this well then definitely x is equal to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0 and from here we can say well then definitely x is equal to 0 or 5. 0 or positive 5. So now you see both roots of this quadratic equation they are 0 and 5 and obviously they are less than 6 because we solved for both roots to be less than 6 and ultimately the solution set that we got which is actually let me highlight in yellow right here this is our final solution set and then we tested a value from that solution set we tested a value of p which is this value right here p equals 0 so we tested a value for p and looks like it works it satisfies our quadratic equation that both roots of this equation is actually looking like less than 6 because we see that the two roots of the quadratic equation are 0 and 5 and both of them are less than 6. So looks like it is working. Hope everything made sense. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.